This is Joseph Coco. I'm at Imtech 2016 on behalf of Becca Hilburn's Art Process blog, Keep on Trucking Natto Soup, as well as her YouTube, YouTube channel. If you could introduce yourself, Heather, please. Uh, my name is Heather Crook, and I am the Artist Alley Coordinator or Manager, if you want to look at it. Okay. And we're actually at the end of the convention. Uh, things went fantastic for Becca, so congratulations <laughs> on setting up a wonderful Artist Alley. Um, so, can you tell us a little a little bit about Intact? This is its 16 year. Has it been consecutive that yes. entire time? Yes, okay. it has been. Um, we've been kind of all over Middle Tennessee. Uh, we've been in Franklin. We've been in Murfreesboro. We've been in Nashville. Um, we started as an itty bitty con at itty bitty hotel, and now we are we're we're at now the Sheridan. Okay. So. And I know that you guys have um, had to fight a little bit in terms of the venues uh, mm -hmm. to get good positioning. Can, I mean, without going into too much detail, can you explain like why it's hard to get a venue which is good for um, everything that Imtech puts on? Because I know uh, the dealer's room is pretty big here. There's always a line. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that has a lot to do with like fire marshals and things like that in terms of how many people can be in the room because yes. it's physical size. Uh, can you just uh, a brief overview of, of how Imtech uh, is considering growing and uh current like contention points yeah. with the oh uh, yeah venue? yeah uh, I think a lot of the, the for MTech especially as a growing con um, we're we're in a market or in an area where anime cons are really needed like there's not a lot of stuff in middle Tennessee for you know yeah. geeks and, and anime fans and uh, as we grow the way that we would do it was uh, we have to look at cost yeah. Um, uh, a lot of it goes into our badge prices like if you want a bigger venue we have to charge a little bit more so we can accommodate you, you know, you guys, and, and and it not be too expensive for us, but also not be unrealistic for you guys. Um, and so we try to keep that in mind when we're looking at places. The hard thing about Nashville is that there's no middle ground. So yeah. you're either going to be a little con, or you're going to be a super huge like anime expo kind right. of con. Right, and that's I've, I've heard you guys are right at the the point yeah, where we're you in would the like to ground. grow, but you can't. Yeah, um, uh, or national. you can't easily without making a huge deal about impact. Basically. Yeah, um, there's not. They don't have. There's no middle convention grounds. Like there's yeah. there's nothing for our size in Middle Tennessee right now. Sure. Um, and our only options are a much bigger venue with different hours, um, different regulations, and much more expensive prices. So right. it's, it's something we so don't want to do. So it's not the do. same. It wouldn't be the same crowd of people, essentially. No, so no. E even if you could fill, fill would, this place hurt. with that many people, it just wouldn't. The people who have come previously might not come because it, it costs so much. Yeah, it would, right. it would hurt, like, because we want people of all ages yeah. to show up. And it would hurt, you know, the 10-year-olds the that want to go and the parents yeah. that want to go with them. The parent doesn't want to spend... A hundred bucks on a ticket for them. Yeah. Plus, and they need spending money yeah. because the dealers need a little bit, and the artists need a little yeah. bit, and the guests need a little bit. So. Yeah, it's a tricky spot. Yeah. Okay. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about the numbers? Do you know about how many people came this year in terms of attendees that's and gonna artists? That's going to be that's going to be really hard to say when it comes to attendees, um, okay. because I. We won't know the for sure number until after the con's over, and they can crunch our numbers and whatnot, and look at how many were walk-in registrations. Um, I do know that we hit our cap because we have an X amount of that we can um, badge that we can sell due to fire, you know, fire codes and hotel capacity and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Um, I know we hit our cap on pre-reg alone. We hit 85%. We were almost sold out before yeah. the so con was even unless started. Unless you knew you were coming to MTAC, you might not get an MTAC. Yeah, yeah. It got really kind of dicey when it came to the, the walk-ins because we didn't know so many people were going to pre-reg. Sure. And so that was... That was an I mean, unexpected. It sounds like a success. Oh so. yeah, it, it was good for us. Um, and in terms of the artist, uh, I know you filled the artist alley early. Yes. There was a little bit of a problem with the website, yes. uh, which caused some animosity. We had, we had a we had a we had a minute of downtime, and yeah. and that kind of put people's day in, made people have some bad days. So. Yeah. Because, I mean, like I said, it's a great convention for artists. Um, everyone at Impact seems to be willing to spend money, whether it's on prints or uh, chotskis, yes. uh, like wearable things, t-shirts, yeah. yeah. um, commissions. It's like, it I, seems to be a pretty well-rounded con, and people, 
are willing to spend money. Well, I try to make, I see it's more successful for artists if we have a balanced con, as we have a little bit of everything, you know, we're not heavy on one thing, or, right. you know, there's an absence of, you know, it's not strictly prints, or it's not strictly, strictly, yeah. I've got con brain, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's fine. Um, there's not crafters, just crafters, you know, there's a little bit of everything, and, and even if there's crafters, there's not more than, you know, one of a type. Yeah. And I try to keep that diversity, so everybody kind of has a fair shot, um, you know, nobody's kind of encroaching into the, you know, the sales of somebody else, so yeah. everybody has a, has a good shot. Okay, well that's good to hear. And do you know about how many artists were turned to turned away who wanted to be tabling in the artist alley this year? We had twenty seven tables, I think, um, okay. total. And they're they're all in this one space, yes, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and we had a wait list of a hundred. Wow. So we had a hundred people that did not make it into the artist yeah. alley. And uh, that entire process is done online. Yes. Uh, you opened up tables about a month before it was the? in february uh okay, the yeah. mid february yeah yeah um so quite a few people were interested right off the bat it seems yeah. like yeah um, i i started getting emails for artist alley in like november yeah, so, yeah. i think becca may have been one of yeah. those so. <laughs> yeah. i'm sorry if, if we were beaten at beating down your door oh uh, no it's fine um, so can you tell me a little bit about what type of artists you think might fit in best here? I know you were talking about a diversity. Mm -hmm. Is there one uh, particular type of artist who applies a lot and you might say, well, um, maybe try another show because there's an overwhelming number of, of like print artists or something um, like that that apply? Or like what recommendation, what type of artist would you recommend uh, try to make it out to Intact? Okay. Firstly, I guess start with uh, how far would you think someone might travel to come to the show? No, that's, a, that's actually interesting. Like, a couple years ago, if you would have asked me that, um, the majority of the people that came here are pretty local. Uh, four hours, maybe tops, is, is the span of people that come here. Yeah, so this driving, year, maybe staying in a hotel, but a couple of people might be driving every day. Yeah. yeah. But this year, we've had people from Canada, from California. Uh, we've got people from Michigan coming down for... For this con. Yeah, so, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. We've got a lot. It's grown a lot. So, I mean, if you're interested and you're not from our area, definitely look us up. Like, okay. we're welcome to, to anybody who wants to. Wants okay. To. And in terms of the wares, um, I know a lot of people at MTAC have tall displays. So, yes. I assume that's something you'd recommend that you try to at least have a, a table that you've built up over yes, yeah. uh, um, a six months to a year. I, I say the more the more you can get your wares up and at a level like because we get we get crowded yeah. um, and and for people who are just kind of browsing through if you've got all your stuff where you know it's down on the table they're gonna miss out yeah, because um, they won't even know that you exist, basically. They'll yeah. walk by and not see anything yeah. if you have a line in front of your table. Yeah, you've got to get it kind of up on eye level so then that way people can and see it. Um, sure. As for, like, the particular type of people that, like, aren't that should be here or what I suggest should be here, Yeah. Um, that's kind of hard to say. Um, I look, for me personally, when it comes to looking through uh, por portfolios and what I think like if I had my ideal kind of artist yeah. um, and when it comes to print artists I look for style um, not necessarily like you have to be some top tier you know like yeah, a big name with a webcomic that's yeah, been going for 20 years or whatever yeah as long as your style is unique and you're not like a cookie cutter you know you're not copying somebody else's style like I have a lot of fan artists that want to do Steven Universe fan art. Yeah, big surprise. But, yeah, but <laughs> but they're not doing their interpretation of Steven Universe. They were wanting to do, you know, Steven Universe, Steven Universe. Right. And that kind of stuff I stay away from because you start getting into that gray area of, you know, you're copying. What if there's a scout here? Yeah. Or even, yeah. like, fans um, should be more open to arts than just saying... I see the thing for my TV show. Yes, I want to buy yeah. that. 
Um, as for crafters, um, it's more diversity. Uh, for a while, we had a problem of people making like the little Lolita hats. Yeah. And I would have ten vendors that would approach me, all wanting to sell little Lolita hats. Sure. And is there is there a big Lolita following in Nashville? Um, there is. There, it's kind of weighing down, and I don't know if that's just how trends are in Artist Alley. Sometimes you see a lot of one thing, and then it kind of dies down a little bit, and then something else crops up, and it's in its sure. stead. Um, uh, it's kind of, there is a big Lolita group in Nashville, um, but as for the crafting type, I didn't get a lot um, this year. I yeah. only got a couple of people who are doing strictly Lolita art, but a lot of that depends on what you do. The more unique your wares, the more it stands out to me as, yeah. as a, a who, who I want feeling the artist. Okay. Yeah. And can you tell me, you're, you're an artist as well, yes. right? Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your work and how you got started in art, how you got started um, volunteering with, uh, with uh, MTAC? It's a uh, cube, arts cube? Arts yeah. cube, yes. Um, I started out doing art. Um, I've been doing art since I discovered I wanted to do art. It was about 6th, 7th grade. I didn't even care about art. And then yeah. a friend of mine showed me some a game that I got obsessed with and I wanted to draw like the character like the characters I saw so I forced myself to start, dr- yeah, start drawing yeah that's the way a lot of people start like they see DBZ characters yeah. or something and they're like oh my god that's so cool that's I'm gonna draw Goku and then a friend yeah. sees it and he says can you draw me Goku that's exactly <laughs> what happened uh, yeah. it, it started to build up from that and then I, I got really passionate about it and then I started making my own characters and then um, sure. I went to art college um, I have my bachelor's in illustration awesome and um I went out wanting to go do artsy stuff, but then I realized I wanted to do my own stuff rather than work for somebody else. Yeah. Um, and so currently I'm working on my own uh, webcomic. Um, it's in development right now. Right. It's just more or less when I can get it done and get it pushed out. Yeah, so you're trying to make a backlog or it's live? Uh, I'm going, I'm making a backlog first. Yeah. Um, and then once I get at least a chapter done, I'm going to slowly release it online. So then that way it gives me a little leeway to work on the comic while I'm releasing yeah. the comic. While you're doing an actual job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, you're hoping to have that weekly? Bi-weekly, I'm thinking. Um, okay. I, I tried a little short stint in weekly comics and it ended up being a little too much. Uh, because yeah. life... Uh, I've got a lot of going on. I'm a mother of two, and so I've kind of... I don't have as much time as I'd like to work on art. Um, As for working for Artist Alley, what made me want to do it is... um, I started doing Artist Alley's um, as an artist uh, 2002, 2003. Um, I went to AWA, um, Anime Amazement, uh, ASIN. Yeah, Um, I'm sure those were much different in 2002 than they are now. yeah. (laughs) Uh, artist alleys were a lot different back then too. Oh, okay, yeah, um, the, the cages probably weren't so popular no, then. No, no. Um, and I started doing that, and I did that for a while, and I really liked it. But the one thing that I didn't like when I was doing it was these. When I went to go pick up my badges, or I wanted to talk to somebody on staff, they were very standoffish. Um, okay. They were. You just didn't want to approach them, kind of. Do you, do you think that's because you're an artist and they didn't know how to treat you, or it was just the staff in general that um, weren't very professional? I think it's just like they... It could be a little bit of both. Okay. Um, because uh, not many cons pay their staffers. Um, yeah. We at MTAC, everything's volunteer. Yeah. And we do it out of love for... You know, our, what it is. Yeah, and, I, and Arts Cube is also a nonprofit, so yes. presumably almost everything's going back into yes. getting a venue, uh, getting better guests, yes. that sort of thing. And we try to do a lot of stuff with our community and whatnot. Um, yeah. And we strive I mean, we to We see have a good you guys having tables at conventions all over town, so um, yeah, outreach we try to do and that good, sort of thing. So to network and, and have a good uh, presence among, you know, our peers. You know, we're not, we're not against anybody, we're not competing against anybody. All we want, yeah. you know, we're all geeks, you know. Yeah. Um, but that's why I wanted to start because I, I art is a thing I love, mm-hmm. and I liked doing artist alley, but I didn't like how I thought artists were being treated. Um, and so when there came a vacancy for this position at this con, that's what I wanted to change. I wanted to make sure that you know if you're an artist, you have that ability to come and talk to me and feel like you can talk to me and feel like you know. I'm on your side and I'm not against you, you know, or anything like that, you know, there's yeah. more, there's 
a person behind the emails that are going out to yeah. you, you know? And, and I, I think I, just being a volunteer represents that a lot because it's not just a job that you're doing because you want to make money and have to make a living and feed your children. Yeah, it's yeah. It's something that you enjoy and invest the time yes. into because yeah. you love it. And then and I try to, you know, I want to be truthful and honest with you guys, you know, if, if there's a problem creeping up, you know, and, and yeah. I'll let you guys know, you know. Sure. I want you kind of, I want everybody on the same page. So, you know, there's no misunderstandings and, you know, and, and it's easier for everybody. You know, it's less of a stressful event for you guys. Yeah. And, it, and it's not as stressful for me because I'm not as, you know, scared. Not quite as much money on the line well, as some Well, yeah, artists. yeah, that, that too, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, speaking of, uh, I know one example of something that, that kind of came up this year was the parking. Yes. Um, I know the hotel, for whatever reason, um, uh, was restricting the parking lot to uh, members who either paid specifically for parking or uh, people who were staying in the hotel. It was, um, the, way that, the way it was explained to me was the, the parking passes were given to people who had a hotel room. Yeah. Um, and then there was like a certain amount of passes that were allotted to people in. Yeah, like a few the, tickets you could purchase or something. I think you get two something. per room. Okay. I could be wrong on that. Um, but then we tried to ask people that were like on staff that had uh, that had a room that didn't need both passes if they mm-hmm. could give us passes so we could give them to vendors and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, we just didn't get enough. Yeah, and you didn't want to play favorites, so yeah. that just didn't really happen. Yeah. yeah that's understandable. But, and uh, it hasn't actually been a problem for us, and it hasn't seemed to have been a problem for too many guests, because yeah. Saturday and Sunday, the businesses next door, um, uh, I mean, no one was there, so yeah, those parking yeah. lots were open, fair yeah. game. Um, so, I mean, can you go through, like, how you, the interaction with that, I know you found out shortly before the convention happened, so, like, how did you frame uh, deciding to contact artists and... Uh, giving them options and those sort of things? Um, usually... Like, just in general when something crops up and also, I guess, specifically yeah, with parking um, to like, use okay, as an example. So using, using parking as an example. The way that I, I normally do it is once I have all the details um, when it comes to a specific... Like, such as, like, the parking. Um, once I have the details, I tell you guys as soon as I know. Okay. So I, I want you guys to know... If they told, um, it's usually within 24 hours. Yeah. Um, because that way, it gives you guys kind of time to figure out what you guys need to do. But I know yeah. this year it was a little bit different because they kind of cropped up on us a little different than they did uh, last year. Like so. I said, it didn't affect us very much, mm-hmm. but we're also local, and I'm sure other artists had more things that yeah, they had to go in them, and out for their cars. We, we kind of gave them a game plan of like the best suggested way of. of coming up here and being able to unload and then there's yeah. places nearby like that, that had shuttle service where they could park their car, take the shuttle up here, um, do their business for the day and then when they're ready to go, get on the shuttle, go back get their car, you know, load up and then sure. do do whatever, you know, you've got to do. But. Okay. So really it's just about gathering all the information and then communicating it yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah, nothing too more complex than that. Yeah, we, we stick we have a thing about making sure that any sort of things that need to be run by, uh, especially artists or just people in general, like any information that needs to be sent out is done within like forty eight hours. Okay. And I know MTAC uh, isn't a jury show, correct? It's no. first come, first serve? Yes. Okay. And is that a decision that you've made, or is that a decision that the staff in general made? I made. Um, okay. We started as a jury um, a couple years ago, and I ran into a lot of problems uh, because you run into a lot of artists that want to know, like, why me? Why did I not get in? Yeah. And, and it might not have anything to do with their ability at yes. all, but there might be some other artists and people, that... people start to take it personally. Yeah, and, and, I can understand and, that. And yeah, yeah, and I do too. Like, you know, that's your art, that's your baby, you know, and you don't want somebody telling you, well, because of this, you can't get in. And I'm, I'm never doing it on quality. Mm-hmm. I do it on, all right, do we need another person, you know, making tiny top hats, you know? Yeah. We've already got three people. Do we need another one? And, you know, it gets really tricky. Because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, and you want to remain fair. Yeah. And so, after my last year of doing that, um, I had a lot of people that got really mad at not getting in. 
And so I was like, well, the only way that I can make it where, you know, I'm not basing anything on, you know, your ability is first come, first serve. As yeah. long as your portfolio reflects the things that I ask. Yeah, set some basic standards, yeah. essentially, and not pitting people against each other. Yes. And I guess that's part of the problem is that artists think you are saying, well, this person is better than you yes. because they got yeah. a table. But in fact, what it is is you're looking out for the best interest of the con goers. Yeah. And part of that might be the quality, but part of it might be you've been here four or five years and people have seen most of your wares and you haven't made too many more yeah. new things or yeah. just anything along those lines. There's a lines. lot of factors in it, and especially when it comes to... There's only three ways you can really run uh, an artist alley. You can do it juried, you can do it a raffle or a lottery, yeah. um, and then you can do it free, uh, first come, first serve. Right. And all of them kind of have their, their drawbacks, drawbacks to it, and yeah. all of them kind of have their perks. But either way, somebody's going to be unhappy. And I found that doing a first come, first serve is less, you know, people get their feelings less hurt that way. Sure. You know, it's more of, you know, if I say you got to turn in stuff at 6 o'clock and you waited three weeks. Yeah. You know, don't be surprised if there's not a spot. Okay. So. Well, I know you said you only had about 20 minutes, so <laughs> we're coming up on that. So I wanted to ask you finally, um, and I probably should have gotten to this sooner, <laughs> but... Uh, what is like the ideal artist at a, a show for you? Like not in terms of what they have, but uh, how they respond to people, and um, maybe like uh, I don't know. I guess what it's hard to say cause problems, but what what artists what type of artist makes things run the smoothest for you as an artist alley head? I I like people who are respectful. Like you know. Um, this is a business, you know, for you guys, and I, and, and I get that. Um, I like people who can understand changes and not immediately take the worst-case scenario route. Like, you know, yeah. it's immediately bad. Like, there's no, there's no middle ground. There's no gray area. Um, I don't know. If, if you can't... I don't know. It's really hard to say. It's okay. I mean, um, unfortunately, the easiest way to answer that is to think of bad examples. And yeah, I don't yeah. want you to call out anyone. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's just, you know, as long as you're respectful, yeah. um, you know, pers I, I tend to like being able to, to talk to artists, you know, as long as you, you know, not, you don't have to be my best friend, but, you know, as willing as you're you know, willing to speak with me, you know, I want to yeah. get to know you as an artist. So then that way, you know, I get a feel for your work a little bit better. And, you know, it it, it helps connect to what I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So just come to the come to the artist alley, talk to you, look yeah. around, talk to other people, and mm -hmm. just get a feel for it before yeah, you decide be, to table don't here. Don't be abrasive. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, understand things happen. It's just, you know, if you, if you didn't get in this year have hope that you can get in next year you know things sure. always change there's always a chance to get in yeah. and just because you didn't get in this year doesn't mean that's it you know yeah. that you'll so, never get in speaking of um i know it's a little early to be thinking about it because the con just yeah. is or the artist alley is just wrapping up but uh how would an, an artist go about following mtac or possibly even the sister con gmx uh, to get a table for 2017. Okay. There are two ways that you can go, can go about it. Um, one, you can either go to either website, uh, which is our, our gmx.net, uh, or mtac.net. I'm just kind of yeah, it's getting... Fine. Yeah. Uh, you can either go to those and kind of keep an eye because any sort of updates we'll have on there. We even have Facebook groups um, for mtac and gmx that you can both follow, and they're, they're both ran the same. And uh, we even have a Twitter for each if you really want to follow those two sure um, and that'll keep you updated on guests that are coming so you can decide if they would fit your art well and also we when the artist alley is opening mm -hmm. yeah any sort of news that we have will flow through all of those uh, formats yeah um, another way to do it is contact me directly okay. um, you can do that through I believe it's artist inquiries um, if you go to our thing and you go to Artist Alley or Dealer's Room, it may under, yeah. be under the contact thing. There should be a section where it says Artist Inquiries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then that'll be sent to me. Um, okay. I do my best to let you guys know as soon as I know something. There will be there could be a long time where I don't know anything uh, due to the inter 
inner workings of the con that are beyond my control. Yeah. Um, but I do try to get back to everybody. Um, that would be the best way. And then that way, you know, you've already started a rapport with me, so that way I can already talk to you and send things out to you. So that would probably be the best way. Okay, that sounds great. And thank you so much oh. for volunteering and putting on a great artist alley. Oh, we are very you, appreciative. You. Are, do you know if you're coming back next year? Oh. Or it depends on oh, well, life situation. Oh, me, me coming back here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm coming back. I'm... I'm not leaving my baby in anybody else's hands, no. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Well, we appreciate it very much. Thank you for being open with us, and hopefully it's going to give an artist an idea of, uh, you know, of how to go about tabling at MTAC yeah, and what and to it, expect. Yeah, and if anybody has any questions for me personally, like, they can, they can ask. Like, I don't mind being asked about, you know, do I think this works, you know, do I? Yeah. You know, I don't mind that at all. Okay. Yeah, and that would be fantastic to give someone an idea of like what convention that um, they might be best at. Because if you're traveling, you need to be a little picky yeah. for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I've got a million more questions I could ask <laughs> you, but I know your time is precious. So uh, have a great time uh, breaking things down, and we hope to see you again next year. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Heather.